Hello and welcome to the LARP Guide. Going to your first LARP event can be a stressful experience as you may find yourself frantically searching around for information on what you will need to bring with you and how best to prepare yourself. So in this video, I'm going to break things down into bite-sized chunks to help relieve some of that stress and make your first LARP preparation as easy as possible. But before I do that, I want to start by saying the best place to get advice for regarding the things you will need when attending your first LARP game is the event organizers. Try reaching out to them and asking them what you will need. But just in case they can't help you or you feel you need a little bit more information, consider watching this video as it may be able to help you. It's amazing how many people leave this to the last minute when attending a LARP. You will often see on event pages people asking for a lift a couple of days before the event. Every time I see this, I get a little chill down my spine. For me, the first thing to consider and one of the most important when attending a LARP is how you plan on getting there. It's amazing how much of an impact this will have on your event as it has such a massive impact on what you can and cannot bring with you. There is no point in buying a massive tent, two cooler boxes filled with food and a set of full plate armor if you are planning on taking the train to the event or catching a lift in a car filled with three other people. I tailor everything for the event based on my transportation option, even down to the character I plan on playing. So I would strongly suggest you take the time to arrange some transportation before doing things like creating a character, purchasing weapon armors and costumes, food and drink, camping equipment. You, you get what I mean. As you may find yourself in a situation where due to your transportation options, you have to leave it all behind or maybe not even attend the event at all. So, the first thing you need to do when attending your first LARP is arrange transportation. Seriously, go do it now. I can wait. If the event you are going to is just one day or close enough to your home that accommodation won't be needed, please feel free to skip this section. So, the next thing that you need to think about is accommodation. If it's an event that runs over multiple days, you will need to prepare or arrange some kind of accommodation. Some LARPs provide it as part of the event ticket price, but in the case of most large LARP fests, you'll find yourself probably camping in a field. I have a link above detailing the types of accommodation you may find at a LARP and their pros and cons. This might be worth a watch if you are after a little bit more information. After you have selected your type of accommodation that best suits you and, you and is available at the LARP you're attending, spend some time making sure you have everything you need to be safe and comfortable. Consider things like the predicted weather at the event. If you'll be sharing that accommodation with others, it's distance to the in-game area, the amount of room required to transport it to the event, and of course, the setup and takedown of it. In a nutshell, take a moment to think over your accommodation requirements, as this is going to be one of the most important things you will need to consider when attending your first LARP. If you are looking for some advice on camping at a LARP, check out this video on essential top 10 tips for LARP camping. You may find some useful information when it comes to camping safety and needs. Now your accommodation is all sorted, it's time to look into what you'll be bringing or not bringing to the event to keep your energy levels up and to be well hydrated. Consider things like storage, transportation and cost when selecting your items. But most importantly, remember, you may only have access to what you're bringing with you or that's available at the event. 
This could be down to the site's location or vehicle restrictions preventing you from easily getting to the local store to pick up some forgotten food items. Plus, no matter how keen you are to eat well and healthy, it's amazing how quickly this gets thrown out the window when you get caught up in the event and you're having way too much fun. I can honestly say that on multiple occasions I have eaten at a food vendor rather than face that long walk back to my tent to grab that pre-made sandwich out of the cooler box. So I tend to pack more healthy pocket snack food to eat when I get a chance and then use the food vendors on site for my main meal during the event. But this is just one personal example check out my video on types of LARP food for a more detailed information on potential options that will be available to you. Hopefully, this video will help you plan out what you need to bring or not bring to an event. You may have medication or medical needs that require attention daily. It's worth taking the time to consider these when planning for your event and how you will go about keeping yourself happy and well. Over my years LARPing, I have learned so many lessons, but one of the most important is making sure I bring with me medication. What I mean by this is those essential items that I have needed in the past and not had access to, resulting in my event being spoiled or me having to run around asking my friends if they happen to have what I need. We will all have different needs, but my Lark bag always contains the following. Suntan lotion, paracetamol, ibuprofen, antihistamines, heat packs, plasters, sterile wipes, diorolite, stomach ache medication like Gaviscom, and most importantly, a luxury triple ply toilet roll. For you veteran LARPers watching this, don't forget to check your medicine bags for out of date or used up items. This is a quick step, but one I think is worth mentioning. The weather can have a massive impact on your event. So make sure you pack appropriately for it. If you have the room, pack some extra socks and a couple of spare t-shirts. Consider layers for the colder events and spare clothes for the wet ones. If you're lucky enough to attend an event in when the sun's out, uh, then let me know in the comments below, as it seems these kind of events are very rare in the UK. I wanna make this clear. No one likes a smelly LARPA. If you are attending a multiple day event and have been running around in the sun, no matter how much deodorant and perfume you doss yourself in, you will smell. So for the lazy LARPers who don't wish to go to the take a shower in the morning or night, my top advice would bring to bring some baby wipes. You can give yourself a good stripped down wash back at your accommodation, or if you're in shared accommodation, you can do this in a toilet cubicle. And for the LARPers who like to stay clean, having a pack of these knocking around in your campsite is a great way to keep yourself smelling fresh throughout the day. But it's worth looking into what wash facilities will be available at the event, and then make sure you plan around these. Also, don't forget to pack some toothpaste and a brush. This step is a big one and something that will be vastly different from system to system. So I'll just be summarizing the most important parts. Read the game brief and familiarize yourself with the rules. Create a character and have it approved by the event organizers. Check out post-event pictures from previous games to get inspiration for your costume that is fitting with that system. If you can't find any pictures, then reach out to the event organizers for potential ideas. Purchase and or create a costume fitting for the system and within your budget. 
purchase appropriate weapons and armor for the system if required and once again within your budget. There is a lot more to this that hasn't been outlined above. To prevent this video from being an hour long, I've just kept it to the basics. For more information on this step, please reach out to your event organizers and ask them about it. So by now, you should have thought about and decided on the following. Transportation, accommodation, food and drink, medication, costume, and finally, clothing. So it's now time to bring all of that together. Create yourself a list, keeping in mind the first seven steps and then expanding on each of these steps to incorporate everything you feel you will need. And then as you acquire these items, just tick them off that list. I have attached my personal list for when I attend a large fantasy lab right here in the UK. Hopefully it gives you some guidance and may be found useful for when you're creating your own. This can be found in the video description. Okay, so that should about cover it. I hope you found this video useful. And if you have, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it within your LARP communities. If you have made it this far, please pop in the comments below. I'm in the last stand gang. So I can give you a personal shout out in one of my upcoming videos for sticking around to the end. And with that, I love you all and goodbye. Yeah.